cryptocurrencies seem to be becoming more and more popular. What actually are they? And what are some of the issues surrounding them and their use? Well, the crypto part of the name relates to cryptography. It's all about secret codes and secure communication. This is fundamental to how these currencies actually operate. Before I go deeper into that, we have to take a closer look at what normal currencies are and how they actually function. Currency is normally based around the physical form of money. We think it's like banknotes and coins. Before the existence of money, goods could be bartered or swapped for other goods of equal value. This of course made transporting goods over long distances rather difficult. So often the goods could be traded for things like gems or precious metals, much easier to transport from place to place. Whilst gems were easier to move, they were also difficult to consistently value. So precious metals like gold and silver were normally used. The problem here was that measuring the weight and the purity of the metals then became an issue. To get around this, coins were then introduced. They were of a set weight and purity and normally standardised by a government who also implemented severe punishments for those people found to be actually tampering with the coins and their value. As trade continued to grow, even moving the coins around proved to be awkward in terms of weight as well as in difficulty obtaining large amounts of rare metals, also possibly leave just someone stealing the valuable coins. So, to circumvent this, some merchants set up systems of promissory notes which could be redeemed for coins at a later date. This was then made into national standard notes issued by banks, That's why many notes carry messages pledging to pay the bearer. These banks get large reserves of gold to back up the currency in case people wanted to redeem the notes. But in general, it was far easier to trade the notes than it was the gold, it was rarely actually carried out in practice. The levels of gold reserves only became an issue in times of monetary crisis. This then evolved in people writing checks on their bank accounts, again to move money from place to place, or even taking notes it was too slow, too cumbersome. Then folk finally moved into electronic transfers, the money could be moved virtually instantly from one account to another. This form of electronic movement of money is now heavily regulated by governments. It can be traced to specific accounts, and account holders can be identified in case of either a criminal act or even things like tax evasion. So how does this then compare with cryptocurrencies? Well, unlike traditional currencies, there's no historic link to a valuable redeemable asset like gold. There's no government controlling the supply of the currency or even regulating it in the traditional sense. This also means that there's also no set way of determining the value of a cryptocurrency against a traditional asset. Instead, the value is purely down to supply and demand. And normally, cryptocurrencies have a very limited supply of the currency. This means the value, or the lack of it, is purely down to how much people want the currency, what they're prepared to pay or exchange for it. This can mean that cryptocurrencies can fluctuate wildly in value either soaring to very great heights or crashing. Of course then this leads to this question, if the currency is so nebulous, why do people use it? What do they use it for? Well, since cryptocurrencies can soar in value, some people will invest in them purely for the speculation, the hope of making a profit out of the currency. However, without some practical benefits, this form of the currency would not be able to sustain the value of the currency. Key to understanding why some cryptocurrencies have become popular is identifying how they differ from traditional currencies. Since cryptocurrencies exist outside of traditional banks and government control, it also means that they're free of many of the regulation controls of traditional currencies. Two key elements of this freedom mean that the currency can be moved from country to country virtually unchecked, and the owner of the currency is virtually anonymous. This course does mean that you could buy cryptocurrency in one country with the traditional currency and sell it in another country for another currency, all without having to identify yourself to any regulating authorities, something which many criminal organisations could benefit from doing, whether it's from laundering profits from drug smuggling or from using ransomware on computer systems. By using a cryptocurrency, criminal organisations can sidestep those organisations we normally try to prevent this form of money laundering. Now, this criminal activity often underpins the value of these crypt cryptocurrencies, both 
in the criminals trading in the currency, but also in legitimate companies buying the currencies to pay off the criminals who've hijacked their computer systems. This possibly means that without this level of anonymity, these currencies couldn't actually operate in the real world with any significant value. However, before I get onto how currencies become traded with each other, I have to carry how it's actually created in the first place. I have to go back to the crypto part of the cryptocurrency. The exact nature and generation of the cryptocurrency varies from currency to currency. Since there are about a thousand of them in existence, I'm going to have to generalize a little bit. The currency is generated electronically. A computer will work through what's known as either a tangle or alternatively some kind of data mining process. This means that the attached computers work through an encrypted system. At the end of the period of time, the potential to be rewarded with some whatever the currency is. However, in order the changes in computer power over time and inflation don't devalue the potential rewards, most cryptocurrencies operate on an exponential system. It means that over time, computers have to work considerably harder create the same amount of currency. There's an absolute limit on the amount of currency that can be potentially mined or acquired from these kinds of systems. Now, the reward generated by the computer process system then goes into an electronic wallet. Which the owner has the code or key, a bit like a bank account number, normally considerably more complex. This means that with a key you can unlock your wallet anywhere around the world. From here, is how do you take the cryptocurrency out of your wallet and exchange it for some real cash or otherwise make use of it? Well, the standard method here is to use a currency exchange broker of some description that can sell your electronic currency for dollars or some other form of money. Now, this exchange is actually a vulnerable part of the process as you need to access your wallet to move the cryptocurrency from one wallet to another. Now, whilst banks do move money like this all the time, all the accounts they're moving money to and from are easily traceable. So even something goes wrong, the process leaves a clear digital trail to follow. In cryptocurrency, the digital trail can just lead to a near anonymous wallet. There have been instances of exchanges being hacked, having all the wallets using exchange emptied at that time. Other issues have involved the loss of the number for the wallet, meaning that the currency in the wallet can't be retrieved Alternatively, software errors or encryption issues create changes in how the wallets are accessed, again making the contents in them unaccessible. Since there's no banking organisation or government body monitoring and regulating these transactions with purely electronic currency, it's easy for these problems to occur. It also means that there's no party an individual can go to in an attempt to get their money back if something goes wrong. Uh, over time, these lost or inaccessible wallets mean that it's actually even less of the currency in circulation, meaning the value of the remaining currency actually increases as the currency as a whole becomes rarer. However, there are even some more potential issues with cryptocurrencies. Since there's little regulation in the cryptocurrency market, the instances of frauders either setting up entirely bogus currencies or fake exchanges making off with significant amounts of real world currency. Another possible area of weakness is in the data mining operations themselves, which can be hacked diverting the currency as it's being created. Now all of these have occurred, but for the most part the trend in increased use of cryptocurrencies has continued. Now, one potential thing that could undermine the existence of cryptocurrencies would be widespread counterfeiting of a cryptocurrency. If a counterfeiter could convince a currency exchange that a fake I say blockchain is a real one, they could potentially flood the market with the currency. So then we can both the faith in the system also mean that the scarcity basis of the value of the cryptocurrency would also disappear. So with all these points to consider, what's the future for cryptocurrencies? Well, we are likely to see many of them crash in value and others fade out of use. However, a number of the currencies will continue to be widely used and may become more powerful than some national currencies. But we're also likely to see far more regulation of these currencies in the future. The most likely successes in cryptocurrencies are likely to come from those that balance out the competing interests of the anonymity of the users and rapid transfer of money around the world with the traceability by government agents trying to prevent a criminal abuse of the system.
there will certainly be some huge profits to be made and some soaring values. Also, some might be lost again when some of the bubbles burst. However, for a currency to reach widespread acceptance, these peaks and troughs need to flatten out. So the real key to successful currency is stability. Knowing what your currency will buy, not only today, but also a year down the line.